When a mysterious respiratory illness emerged late last year, it was hard to imagine that it would soon bring the world to its knees. I'm Grant Hardy, and in Vancouver, I found social distancing and the COVID-19 pandemic very challenging. Neighborhood hotspots, like my favorite restaurants, have closed or cut back on their services. Simple outings have turned into stressful missions. More sedentary than usual, I'm finding it tough to make healthy lifestyle choices. There's no rule book for dealing with COVID, so we're all learning together. I wish I could cure COVID-19. Instead, I'm exploring how we can all stay as healthy and well as possible during these unprecedented times. This is Inside the Bubble, Health and Wellness During COVID-19. As the saying goes, we are what we eat. And now more than ever, we need the best food and nutrition to fuel our journey through this pandemic. AMI TV's host, Mary Mamaliti, talks about what we can do. Mary, why should people care about what they eat, especially during stressful periods? I mean, well, even if we do stress eat, at least let's choose the right foods. Um, instead of, you know, kind of leaning towards that bag of potato chips, I would probably grab, you know, a bowl of cherries. Um, not always, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna say that I'm like, this is perfect person that's always eating these, you know, these healthy uh, snacks, but um, I do tend to try and balance that out. Definitely wise words. You know, it's so easy to get into the habit of just ordering in. Why is it also important to enjoy home cooked meals? The reason why it's important to uh, have some home cooked meals is because you can actually, you can control what goes into your meals. You know the amount of salt that you're using, you know the amount of sugar that you're adding. Um, so for that aspect, it's so important to actually cook home meals. What staples should people always make sure they have on hand? Beans, tuna, um, olive oil, a little balsamic or vinegar that you like, eggs. Eggs are something that I always have in my refrigerator. Pastas, rice, freezer vegetables, great to have. Keep those in your freezer. And then let's say one day, you know, you just want to make a quick dinner. Just do some stovetop rice, which is done in, I'd say 15 minutes. Add that to your pan, some soy sauce, a little bit of spice, because I love spice. Get those frozen vegetables, add it into that pan. And there's another meal. Definitely sounds healthy. You know, a lot of people are having trouble making grocery runs these days. How do you stretch your food in between shopping trips? What I do do now is I will plan meals for the week. So I'll plan a couple of meals and I'll make enough that there's leftovers and the leftovers can actually be used as another meal. So for example, if we're having um, salmon, I'll pick up some salmon, make that salmon, I'll double it, so then I'll top my salad with it for lunch. If you're making a tomato sauce, right, and you want pasta one day, but there's, there's leftover and you just, you don't want to get, you don't want to have pasta every single day or use that tomato sauce every single day, freeze it. And I would freeze it either in Ziploc bags, portion it out, or in, you know, some freezable Tupperware containers. Enjoy your time in the kitchen. Have fun with it. Don't take yourself too seriously. Just have fun with it. From food to fitness, now that we're fed, we're going to get moving. When Inside the Bubble, health and wellness during COVID-19 returns. You're watching Inside the Bubble, health and wellness during COVID-19. Movement, it's what the human body was designed to do. But social distancing during COVID-19 has made getting exercise and staying fit difficult. Mike Lonergan from BC Blind Sports wanted to help kids and families keep their bodies moving and developed a program to do just that. Here was a chance to give some skills, help give the, the kids a chance to develop some skills at home uh, with their families because that's who they were stuck with, right? They're out, everybody's there. So this is a good chance to introduce things like motor skills, uh, running, jumping, throwing, uh, uh, hopping, real basic skills sometimes 
Uh, it was a chance to introduce some new games that they could do in the house, things like basement bowling, uh, mini golf around the house. And I also provided some uh, equipment adaptation ideas, things to adapt regular everyday equipment for someone who's blind and visually impaired so they could use it. Simple things like a ball on a bag with, to create sound or a throwing rope. So those, those are kind of the ideas we had. So I provided one, uh, 10 weeks of different exercises and games and opportunities for them to try stuff. And to, to end it, we actually had a virtual sports day. That is really cool. That's such a neat and creative idea. Tell me this, how do you instruct remotely in a non-visual way? It actually made me really think about how I wrote stuff because, you know, it's written and it's video. I, I would provide some, there's sample, video samples out there of almost every activity, right? Or pictures, but that, you know, that's great if they can see the pictures. So hopefully the parents had a chance to at least look, but it's not hands-on for sure. That's a bit hard. So there was some feedback you could get verbally from them. It made me really write carefully about how I was describing an action and some of the things and how I could relate it to what they, you know, either their age level or their skill level. Maybe they've had skills already, but you had to really kind of work your way through that. Mike, what difference do these opportunities make in people's lives? You know, I, I really, the videos I saw and the feedback I got, the kids were actually getting outside and riding bikes around. I mean, because they had a goal, you know, you, if you provide a goal, sometimes that motivates people. So here was a goal, it might have been the prizes, it might have been for fun, whatever motivated, we gave it to them and they, they seemed to take advantage of it. Mike, you've rolled this out, you've heard some amazing feedback by the sounds of it. How does this make you feel? I couldn't do what I normally would do, which is about traveling, going from the schools. I mean, it's great meeting the kids. But this actually gave me a chance to focus on some of the, the, the basic skills we want to teach them and to find another method. And I, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in the next couple of years of schooling. It's going to be different. Actually, it really motivated me to uh, maybe not retire for a little while yet. COVID-19 may have thrown off most people's fitness routines, but what about those playing competitive sports at a higher level? Well, for John T, sports are an essential part of life, and as a member of Canada's national goalball team and a blind hockey player, John feels the need to keep sharp and stay in shape. Well, I've always, when I, I've always been a sporty and kind of a person that likes to move. I don't like to be sitting around too much if I can help it. Like I wanna, I wanna go to the Paralympics in ball and hopefully hockey but I'm not gonna you're, I'm not just gonna be given that you have to go and work hard even in any of those high level things you can't you don't just get them and mm -hmm. just to be somewhat healthy or healthier you have to make changes and we've actually had some time since we've had so much zoom time we've actually done some zoom seminars on we've done three weeks of nutrition and then we just did three weeks of mental preparedness so we're talking about trying to eat better and they're and they're talking about concerns about how people are eating during the virus mm -hmm. since people are at home um, just eating junk food and stuff like that yeah i would imagine this is one of the craziest times to be trying to stay healthy and in shape uh tell me this what are you doing personally to keep up your fitness level like we have some really old style like um dumbbells and a, a really weird looking bench press i had enough that i could do really basic um bench press and squats and deadlifts in our carport which is covered and we have stuff like um, medicine balls and resistance bands and step up um, boxes so we have enough stuff and i was just slowly doing uh, different things just to uh just to split up my day because a lot of people were talking about how they would just wake up and just sit in their pajamas all day and do nothing and uh, people were saying that that wasn't the best way to keep yourself mentally uh, fresh for for this for no, not knowing how long this is going to be well i could certainly learn one or two uh lessons from you that's for sure um i guess it's one thing to stay mentally and physically fit how do you make sure you don't get rusty in the competitive sports that you play when i play by ho hockey i like i taught myself to skate at a level where i could be competitive but my my stick handling and shooting ability was nowhere 
really to be just enough to move the puck and not really do anything. I'm hoping that when we get back to actually skating that my uh, stick handling ability will be a little bit better at least. And I think I can shoot now. <laughs> John, what really pushed you and motivated you to post clips of your drills and workouts on social media? Originally, I was just posting it for fun, just to be like, even though we're we're all locked down now, if you have a will, then you can think of a way to do something, uh, do what you want to do. Just also try to motivate other people. What's the feedback been like? I've had a mixed bag. So I've, I've had a couple of the other hockey players from other places like in the U.S. They're like saying how I need to keep my top hand and my elbow a little higher, <laughs> have my knees bent while I do this motion, which I think, which is great because again, like I've only played eight years and we've never had any actual hockey coaches. So I'm doing everything on the fly, just trying to like learn, watch some uh, videos and most of it's trial error so that was pretty good and I've also some of the other guys from the Vancouver Eclipse here are uh, chirping me hey you're keeping sports fans engaged that's always a good thing John what are you looking forward to most after COVID-19 and these crazy times are over getting back into a more competitive rhythm because it's I think even all the professional uh, athletes that are trying to get back into the shape for their things you can you can work hard off off the field but um when you get back on it it's a whole different thing coming up we learn how to put things into perspective and look after our mental health in a time when the most normal things seem scary when we return to inside the bubble health and wellness during covid19 Welcome back to Inside the Bubble, Health and Wellness During COVID-19. It seems like 2020 has all been about staying physically safe, but more than ever, mental and emotional health is precarious. And when we're feeling anxious or sad, it's easy to feel all alone. Kevin Naidu, host of AMI-TV's Reflect and Renew, comes to us with some important advice for self-care. We feed off of each other. We get inspired from each other. We, we're, we're, we're really direct, clear reflections for one another. So when we're all of a sudden isolated, it, it sometimes pulls us into our triggers. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard during the best of times, let alone a crisis. Can you talk about the impact that stress and anxiety have on us? When we're sitting with stress and anxiety, often we become our worst critics and we are running our head through old belief systems um, that are no longer serving us. And it, when we're sitting in that place of anxiety and worry, it's so hard to get out of that space and to come into that place of self-love. So my suggestion for that is create a safe space for yourself uh, that's just for you even if it's a closet, even if it's a room, but it's a space that you can sit at, you can connect with who you are, you can be supported, you can cry if you need to, you can get mad if you need to. We don't have to worry about anyone else listening or any judgments or anything like that. I guess a safe space is part of this, but Kevin, how do we just learn to be okay with ourselves when probably everyone is feeling really crappy and insecure and just unsure about things right now? We can't take care of anyone, our families, our communities, anything, if, we're, if our well is empty and we don't have anything in our container. When we try to do our work from that place, we tend to react. We tend to attach into a situation. But if we can actually come in and look at ourselves and mm -hmm. allow ourselves to verbally communicate, you know what, I love myself. How does that feel to love myself? And allow that love to vibrate inside of you that becomes a practice in its own. How do you deal with those negative thoughts and negative self-talk that threatens to take over, especially during these stressful times? We're so much stronger than we give ourselves credit for sometimes. And all this is about when we can look at our journey, we can start to create a healthy pattern that's supporting us moving ahead. But it all starts with communicating kind words to ourselves. 
and not these negative triggering words, but kind, telling yourself you love yourself, telling yourself that you're worthy, that you know, honoring any wounds that have happened in your life and not looking at a negative, but when we can just stop and be like, you know what, that did happen. I can honor that as part of my journey. I love to keep affirmations in my head throughout the day. It keeps me present. And when we're present, we're right here. Nothing else is going on. What do you do when you're just having a down day and it's hard to put your finger on why, but you're just not, not feeling it? How do you switch things up and turn the day around? Nature, they say, is our greatest healer. We're from the earth. We're born from the earth. All of us connect at the earth. So getting outside, putting your back up against the tree, going for a walk out of town, out of the city, you know, feeling the branches, getting your hands into the earth and getting planting. If you have a garden, get your hands in there, feel the earth beneath you. It, it, it breaks all division that the world creates amongst us and it comes us back to right here. Looking after yourself during COVID times is tough enough but what about when you're responsible for the health and wellness of others? We turn to Blind Beginnings founder and parent, Sean Marcelet for some guidance. We're way down in, in physical activity for kids since COVID happened. So being stuck at home has definitely impacted people. For many of the families I work with, some of their kids have compromised immune systems. So they're even at more risk. Um, a lot of families are not getting any kind of respite that maybe they did before even having you know physiotherapists or occupational therapists come in and work with their kids that's not happening um and then having like both parents at home while trying to homeschool and parent is also another challenge just being con confined to a small space for some families has been really tough yeah it's definitely not easy that's for sure. Do you have any advice for parents? It's just really taking that time to, to have quality time with your kids. It's interesting that you should even have to say that when we're all forced to be together <laughs> all day long every day in many cases, but just sort of remembering that this is all strange and different for them too. Um, as parents, we're feeling anxious, the kids are feeling anxious and confused. And so making sure that, you know, you're just having fun together and actually making an effort to do that, like making it intentional, I think is really important. We've certainly had more meltdowns in our house, uh, mainly from the six-year-old, but sometimes, <laughs> sometimes from the grown-ups too. Um, I just have to keep reminding myself to be patient and, you know, like just remembering that even though they're little people and they don't necessarily know truly what's going on, this is still strange for them. So the things that I would normally not have patience for, or the things that I would normally think this isn't worth a meltdown over, um, I have to recognize that maybe it is in this case, right? So I don't have any tips for preventing it. Um, keeping kids busy helps. Get outside as much as you can. I think that there's so many benefits in being outdoors, it just feels better. It's actually safer in terms of this virus as well, but there's just so many benefits for us as individuals to be outside. And I think just everything feels better, but I think for kids, especially, you know, get active and, and enjoy the outdoors. Along those lines, what about socializing and play dates with other kids? I don't know that my husband and I are exactly on the same page about that. So he's way more relaxed about letting our son kind of back into playgrounds and day camps. And I'm sort of more hesitant and unsure. It's weighing mental health and physical health. And, you know, my son is really social. He really, really, really thrives around other people. We did send him back to school for June um, because he needed to be around other kids. So it's kind of weighing that, but also just, you know, what's right for you? Like, I'm feeling a bit of pressure that, okay, these things are open, so I should feel okay about sending my child into those environments, but I don't. And acknowledging that, like, that's okay if you don't feel okay about it. It's what works for your family and for you. COVID-19 has unnaturally forced us to stay apart 
rather than come together during a crisis. But at least we have a plethora of accessible technology available to exercise our social lives. Stephen Scott, co-host of Double Tap Canada on AMI, gives his perspective on how we can stay connected while apart. Socializing to me has always been a bit of a challenge anyway. Getting out there and you know enjoying the world, going out for a drink or going out for a meal. Yeah, I do those things, but I do have challenges. Group events I find particularly difficult. So, you know, the idea of doing everything on Zoom or doing everything via uh, FaceTime actually in some ways is quite appealing. Uh, you know, there's a lot of benefits to that. Uh, I'm not saying it's for everyone, but it certainly is for me. What about for people who are a little bit more reluctant to go online for socializing? What would you say to them? Don't be frightened to use the tech that's around you. Don't be frightened to try things. If you're in a position where right now you're losing some of your vision and your sight is getting worse take the time now i guarantee you it's worth it I, w I wish i had done it more spend the time you know turn on voiceover get used to how to use a phone with a with a screen reader or a computer switch on narrator on your windows pc or voiceover on your mac or chromevox on your chromebook if you have one you know try these features out because very quickly you'll realize you can do all the things you want to do with that device and listen to shows like Double Tap, watch AMI, listen to what we're saying, because we're telling you it can be done and we'll show you how it can be done. Trust us, it, it isn't easy. It's always a challenge. When I started with voiceover for the very first time, I think the first two weeks I wanted to put my phone through the nearest window on a fairly regular basis. But at the same token, it is so important that you persevere with it because it can change your life for the better and it gives you all the abilities, like I've, you know, going right back to the start of our conversation, when I say to you, you know, you can be connected with people and you can do all that using that tech and then learn more. But I think the coronavirus pandemic really has pushed a lot of us who have maybe been on the sidelines of this, who have maybe thought to ourselves, nah, this technology is not for me, or I'll get around to learning it one day to actually doing that. And I think that is a real positive. You know, if you've made that first FaceTime call or you've been on that first Zoom chat, that can be so empowering for people. And that's the positive we need to take out of this. Just keep going with it. Just keep going. This pandemic is like nothing else I've experienced. Fear and uncertainty seem to hang in the atmosphere like a fog around us. But the best we can do is focus on what we control, what we eat, what we do, and who we connect with. Be thoughtful and kind for us and for our community. Ultimately, we can get through this, not alone, but together. Host, Grant Hardy. Producer, director, Amit Tandon. Videographer, editor, Sergio Vera Barahona. Integrated, described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Audio post, Mark Phoenix. Graphics, Andrew Antonello. Post-production supervisor, Jennifer Johnson. Senior producer, Michelle Dudas. President and CEO David Arrington, Copyright 2020 Accessible Media Incorporated.